everybody welcome back to the russell dude youtube channel as here today we are here for the first official episode of the collection corner it is no longer being called shop for a pop uh, i announced that on the last episode of shop for a pop it is now going to be called the collection corner because uh, over time shop for a pop which originally was focused on just me finding collecting and buying Funko Pops, but over a long period of time, I started collecting more than just Funko Pops. I started collecting wrestling figures, I started collecting like DC Multiverse figures, Simpsons figures, Toy Story stuff. Um, so I decided to just make it an amalgamation of all that, not just Funko Pops. Uh, I didn't want to limit the title, so from here on out, it's just going to be called The Collection Corner, because Technically, I mean, I'm telling you guys this all from a corner. <laughs> hey, my niece. My cat just woke up. <laughs> Come here. Did I wake you up? I'm sorry. Did I wake you? <laughs> you want to say hi to the camera? Say hi. <laughs> no, don't say hi to me. Say hi to the camera. Ah, there we go. That, that always happens as soon as I start recording she like wakes up and come see what I'm doing like what are you doing Jacob who are you talking to <laughs> anyways um back to the video um I have another big collection here I got some Funko Pops I got some wrestling figures I got a DC multiverse figure before we get started make sure you leave a thumbs up and a comment down below letting me know what your favorite thing throughout this entire pile is and also if you're wondering why I'm wearing gloves uh, my hands have been kind of cold, uh, it's very cold here in my room, uh, uh, the walls are all brick, and whenever it's like very cold out, it like sucks in all the coldness and just brings it here into my room, so I'm wearing a sweater and uh, <laughs> fingerless gloves, custom fingerless gloves, uh, they were just gloves I could never find a match to, so I just cut them, and now I use them like this. So yeah, let me know in the comment section below one thing from this entire pile that you guys enjoyed the most. Anyways, let's get into it here. We're going to start off with a Funko Pop. Uh, I know the show is not called Shop for a Pop anymore, but we're going to start it off just because usually that's kind of how we always do. This is the Marvel Luchadors uh, selection. This is... What was he called? El Arachna? Uh, it's basically uh, Luchador Spider-Man, and I think it looks really cool. Um, a lot of the ones from this line are very neat. The, the only two I would really be interested in getting are El Arachna, so Spider-Man, and then the Venom one. I can't remember what he's called, but... Uh, those two would be very, very cool. Uh, the Wolverine one looks great, too. Um, but I don't want to go, uh, overboard with it. My, uh, Marvel section is, uh, already overflowing there on that shelf. Actually, when I got this, I was confused where I was going to put it, uh, either on my Marvel shelf or my wrestler's shelf. So I was kind of, like, going back and forth trying to decide where it goes. But I ended up putting it on my Marvel shelf. I ended up, uh, making some space for it. But yeah, it looks good. I love what they did with like the stitching design, making that sort of like the spider web. And it also kind of reminds me of the scene from the first uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie where he's uh, a wrestler, masked wrestler. Not in the same outfit, but it kind of evokes that with this figure. So it looks very, very good. Um, sticking with Funko Pops, we're going to go with Joe Garner from Soul. This was a very fun movie. I really liked it. I very much enjoyed it. I loved the story, loved all the scenes from it, so I decided to pick up Joe Gardner from Target. Um, I don't know if I'm going to collect any more of the Soul ones. I think I might just collect uh, Joe Gardner. If I find Soul Joe Gardner, that could be good. And then 22, although I think that is technically all of them except for like the cat and I think there might be a couple chases or something like that but it was a very fun movie I very much enjoy this figure I love the look of it with this little uh stick uh which um uh, I actually thought at first kind of looked like one of those like candy sticks that people would say are like cigarettes for kids um but oh actually no that wouldn't be the whole set okay so there's two different um there's two different 22s there's soul joe there's soul cat there's the cat with the pizza, and then there is, 
Moonwind, who had some of the best jokes throughout the movie uh, whenever he was on screen, so that's great. So, yeah, out of all these, I would probably just collect Joe Gardner, Soul World Joe Gardner, and 22. So it would only be three out of all of them. But, yeah, I do love this figure. It's definitely going to go uh, in my movies and TV shelf. Or maybe I'll put it on my Toy Story shelf just because, uh, I mean... It's it's Pixar, so it kind of goes with it, but I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out. I gotta manage my shelf space already. I'm already trying to think, like, do I need to buy another shelf? But boy, howdy, am I running out of real estate for it. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do these two together. These are two wrestling figures that literally just came in last night in the mail. Uh, one of them is for my Ohio Wrestlers collection, and the other one is just because I love I liked it. These are TNA Impact Wrestling figures. This is Shark Boy, who is for my Ohio Wrestlers collection. And then this, uh, his name is Suicide, although he's gone by uh, the name Manic in more recent years, and then he went back to the name Suicide. Uh, obviously, they can't print that uh, on the figure, because uh, normally it would be printed right here. But I love the story behind this character uh, in wrestling, because how it played out is he was a character in the Impact Wrestling video game, and then he came to life, and that is his gimmick. He is a video game character that came to the real world, and then from there he like g became unmasked for a little while, and then he changed his name to Manic, and then he became TJP, and then TJP came back to Impact Wrestling, and then he became Manic, and then Suicide came back, and then they teamed together, and now TJP is on his own. But suicide is still a thing. I, I don't know. It, it's very confusing at times, but he's still one of my favorite characters just because he looks awesome. And it it ties back into my love of Spider-Man. You can obviously see the, the color scheme similarities and also the cool, like, skull pattern. Like, when I was first getting into Impact Wrestling a few years back and I was seeing the return promos for Suicide, I thought he looked really cool. And his moveset always looked really awesome. And I love the idea that over time there's a new person that takes up the mantle of uh, suicide. I think at first it was like Christopher Daniels or Kazarian or something like that, and then it became like TJP, uh, and now I think it's uh, Caleb Connolly or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, I love the idea of over time different people become suicide and go under the mask and try to be him. So I think that's cool. I think that makes it a very timeless character, and it can you kind of have to be like that if you're going to be a video game character. You have to, no matter how old you are, slow down. And then Shark Boy. Shark Boy is one that is very weird. Um, so I would say his career really kicked up a notch at one point. I think he got like bashed over the head with a steel chair or something like that, and he went into a coma. And when he came out of the coma, he thought that he was Stone Cold Steve Austin. But not literally Stone Cold Steve Austin because they couldn't get away with that because uh, of copyright. So instead he would say like Stone Cold Steve Austin phrases, but he would say them with like ocean puns. So he would say like, give me a shell, yeah. Or he would say like, that's the fish in line because Shark Boy said so, you know, stuff like that. It, it was very fun and he had like a cool vest on. Obviously that doesn't come with it here. One thing that I will notice... Uh, very quickly about these figures they are very tall uh, especially compared to the WWE Mattel figures even the uh, in, the AEW figures they are very very tall so obviously uh, you can't really use these in your fig feds uh, unless you come up with some story reason as to why they're so tall you know maybe Big Show becomes suicide or something like that or maybe Shark Boy turns into like Megalodon Shark Boy or something like that, but they are very cool figures. I'm very happy to have them in the collection. Thank you very much to the the gentleman that helped me out getting these uh, when I bought them from on Instagram. But yeah, they look very freaking awesome. I'm glad to have those ones, and I'm glad to have uh, this next thing in my DC Multiverse collection. Uh, this is the Deathstroke. This is from Batman Arkham Origins. Um, I was contemplating getting this uh, for a very long time 
uh, mostly just because I don't know if I was really sold on it at first. Like, it looked really cool, but I don't know if I was super, like, sold on it. But then I kept seeing people post pictures of it, and it would be, like, posed really cool and stuff like that. So, uh, one day I was at uh, Target, and I saw it, and I was thinking about it, and I was... I saw it on the shelf, and so I was like, you know what, I'm going to take a walk around. I'm going to take a walk around, and if I still feel like I want to get it, then I'll come back and I'll get it. And I went down an entirely different aisle, and I saw it again, like, hanging on the shelf. And it wasn't even in, like, the DC section. It was, like, uh, towards the wrestling figure section, <laughs> and I just saw it randomly, like, hanging on the shelf. So I saw it twice, and I was like, you know what, that's a sign. I'm going to pick it up. And I do not regret it at all. It looks great. Um, like I said, it's from Batman Arkham Origins. Uh, a very underrated Batman game, I would say. People don't really seem to like it uh, as much as any of the Arkham other Arkham games. But I, I still like it. I think it's really cool. Uh, I love the detail on it. I love that you can add the sword into his little uh, back piece right here. So I think that looks really cool in case you don't want to display him with the sword. But... I mean, it's just a very iconic weapon for him, so I don't know why you wouldn't. But, yeah, he looks very awesome. A lot of maneuverability. You can bend the legs, bend the arms. Uh, very cool head sculpt, you know, with the helmet. Doesn't come off, but uh, I feel like he is more iconic with the helmet on. Um, yeah, I think this looks pretty freaking awesome. It's going to go awesome on my, I guess, DC Multiverse shelf, or my comic book shelf over there, which I guess is my DC Multiverse shelf, so, hey, who knows? It's, it's funny, I'm more leaning towards being a Marvel fan, although I have no Marvel Legends collected. I have mostly DC Multiverse figures, but I don't know, it's just there hasn't been any Marvel Legend figures that have really jumped out to me as ones that I want to get besides the venom uh marvel legend figure but those are very expensive rates right now so i don't know maybe i'll wait and see if the price drops at some point before i pick one up but for now i do love this death stroke i'll definitely uh pose him with the sword at some point but uh i'll have to figure out how to maneuver some of those other figures around there on that shelf before i do that and finally we have two brand spanking new WWE Elite Figures. Um, we are going to go with this first one. This is Liv Morgan. This is from Elite Series 85. Looks awesome. It's a more sort of updated Liv Morgan from her return uh, towards the beginning, or was it towards the, was it towards the end of, it was towards the beginning of, like, 2020. This is, like, her Royal Rumble outfit, and then she has her, like, return jacket, uh, outfit um from her like return promos um i think they did a really good job with this figure i think the the face scan looks really great um the prototype images when they came out before uh i was a little iffy on i don't even think the prototype images showed the the jacket i can't even remember but uh with those prototype images they're in gray they're in white and gray so it's really hard to tell sometimes how it's going to look in the final product but then once i saw the actual like pictures of it the actual figure pictures i thought it looked awesome so i'm very happy to finally like have this in the collection i'm a big fan of uh, Liv Morgan. I think she looks uh, really cool. Uh, the outfit was really cool. I think this whole character change for her had a lot of promise. It was just that <laughs> they, they, they never really went anywhere with it that really meant anything, I mean, in my opinion. And then they kind of just put her back with the Riot Squad, which, I mean, they're doing pretty great stuff right now, but I don't know. I was just hoping for more from that. And then finally, we have the C Elite Series 85 Undertaker Boneyard. It comes with the bandana and it comes with a little shovel right there. I loved the Boneyard match. I really do hope that it is The Undertaker's last match in WWE just because, you know, uh, the matches that he was having, like, actually in ring weren't super incredible, like, towards the end. And I do feel like the Boneyard match was a great way to kind of cover up some ways that he wasn't able to do some of the stuff that he did before. 
And I think it was a really great, like, ending to his career, you know, he buried, he literally buried AJ Styles in a mound of dirt, got on a motorcycle, had Metallica playing him off as he rides into the, the night. I think that was a really cool way to end it, and I think they did a really great job of capturing him here. And I kind of started a mini collection inside my wrestling figure collection of, like, Undertaker throughout the years, and... I think now the only two that I really need, I have Ministry of Darkness Taker, I have like the more modern Undertaker uh, right here with his like custom Undertaker belt, and then I have the Boneyard Undertaker, so the only two that I would need are like his debut with like the purple gloves or gray gloves, that sort of era, and then the American Badass, which there is like a basic series American Badass. It's like a two pack that comes with Jeff Hardy. So maybe I'll pick that up at some point. And then I've been seeing a lot of like the classic Undertakers going on sale for cheap. So I'll probably pick that one up there. But yeah, this is a great figure to add to the collection. I think they did a really great job. The, uh, the chest molding is an interesting choice to me why they would make that sort of like a its own piece but i think it still looks good um yeah this will probably definitely be displayed on my shelf front and center uh probably with his uh shovel and maybe the golden or his custom championship and then at some point ringside collectibles has like a little play set with like a casket and like an urn maybe i'll pick that up and i'll have the urn in his hand as well uh, but yeah, all that has been our first official episode of the Collection Corner. So let me know in the comment section below what you guys enjoyed. Uh, was it one of the wrestling figures? Was it one of the Funko Pops? Was it our DC Multiverse figure Death Stroke? Let me know in the comment section below. And I will see you guys next time on the Wrestle Dude Collection Corner.